Where are we at now, Mike? Uh, Calcars.org. They take... Uh, oh, for this Kramer, Pri yeah. That's right, yeah. They take Toyota Priuses, put some extra batteries in the trunk, and they get 100 miles a gallon. So you cribbed that off the back of the car, didn't you? That's right. The idea behind a plug-in hybrid is uh, take your local miles, the miles you commute in every day, and fuel them from electricity. Go home at night in your garage, plug it in, regular 120 plug, and the next day you, that little fuel tank is filled up all over again. The way we've done it, which is a, an incomplete conversion, under 35 miles an hour, it's all electric. Okay. Uh, above that, it's a mix. The main battery stays in that Toyota put in, right? Actually, in this one, there are a variety of solutions. In this one, we replaced the battery. We removed the nickel metal hydride battery that used to be in the back. Yep. And this large box, which isn't actually all that heavy, uh -huh. uh, it contains a lot of lithium ion batteries. And uh, it adds only 150 pounds of weight to the car when you subtract the weight remo of removing the old battery. Now, the plug back here gets me to, I think, the main thing about the behavior of using this car. At night, you're going to plug it in typically, right? When you've got low power costs, low demand on the grid. That's exactly right. Uh, if tomorrow morning all the cars in America turned into plug-in hybrids, we could uh, power 84% of them by charging at night with the today's grid. We wouldn't have to build a single new power plant. Mm. So it's really not an issue. There's an enormous amount of unused power at night. All right, Felix, let's start with the factory gauge here on the Toyota display. 81 miles per gallon looks really good to me, but that's nothing. Yeah, so this one shows that since I gassed up uh, 98 miles, uh, I got 81.1 miles per gallon. The only reason it's not over 100 is that I did a lot of driving beyond the uh, standard daily range of the car. If I were driving only in my local neighborhood at, uh, lo at th under 35 miles an hour, You'd I would never turn the gas no, engine no on. electricity. And at that point, you could literally go for months without gassing up the car. You'd have the problem of stale fuel. Why don't the car makers do this? Well, it's really changed. There are now seven car makers that say it's a good idea. And two of them say they want to be first. That's GM and Toyota. Okay. They both say they're not going to do it because they say the batteries aren't ready. They're saying we're not going to build these until we have uh, batteries that will last 150,000 miles. The whole win in this game is mass production at low cost of the highest quality cars available as plug-in hybrids. And eventually, I think that plug-in hybrids will be the basic platform for cars. We're promoting a technology that uses no, requires no new breakthroughs, no new infrastructure, and we're saying, let's do it now, and we're illustrating it with conversions to show people what's possible. Cars are just uh, one of the most important segments of, of the economy. They impact everybody for better and worse. And when I started this, I realized that uh, the decisions about what kind of cars we drive are made by a very narrow group of people, basically just government and car makers. Mm -hmm. And every driver and every car buyer and owner and, and citizen is affected by these and ought to have a say. We've got a whole range of different organizations, companies doing conversions, all of whom are feeding into this campaign to get car makers to build plug-in hybrids. We're closer and closer, but we're not there until car makers do it. For more video like this, go to CNET.com and click on CNET TV.